We know from the information you recovered from the Vahar system that the Tal Shiar are planning to attack a Riemann settlement in the Dara system. We have an opportunity to reach the settlement first. This may be a completely internal matter, and if so, the Prime Directive will come into play. We will not be able to interfere. But if there is an outside influence directing these matters, we must know what it is. Our encounters with the Undine and the Changelings have proven that there are entities attempting to move the powers of the Quadrant like pieces in a cal -Toe game. It is essential to protecting the Federation to see these attempts for what they are and counter them. I want you to go to the Dara system and learn more about the Riemann uprising. The Riemanns will have hidden their base, so you may have to use subterfuge to find it. One more thing. I realize this is a dangerous situation and that you may be drawn into conflict, but do not antagonize the Remans or the Romulans if you can avoid doing so. We are already at war with the Klingon Empire. I would prefer to avoid another extended conflict. When have I ever antagonized the Romulans? She hung up on me. The Dara system is deep in Romulan space, so we're going to be violating the neutral zone it seems. But I think Starfleet is resigned to an upcoming conflict with the Star Empire anyway. The Prime Directive is a tricky thing here. It broadly states that we cannot interfere with the internal political struggles of another society, even the Romulans. However, it seems we would have been able to confiscate Thaleron weaponry if found, a charge Obisek is still guilty of, even if we thwarted his attempts to deploy them. Or we may be able to interfere if this proves to be not a strictly internal affair. If there's already a third party involved that threatens more than the Romulans and the Remans. Political red tape. My gut says it seems to get in the way of doing the right thing, but honestly we don't have the full picture yet, so it's probably for the best that we're restraining ourselves. We arrive at the Dera system and are confronted by a massive star. Its size shows its age, and we have to navigate around its bloated form before we can locate our starting point. This star, despite its size, is probably still in its main sequence. It hasn't yet turned a deep cold red, the telltale signs of a dying sun. Upon entering the system we learn that our sensors are being jammed. Well, we are deep in Romulan territory. Perhaps the Remans saw us coming, after all it's not like we've got a cloak of our own. Then again, there is no welcoming party, so more likely it's a constant sort of dampening field, perhaps a natural interference. Temet suggests we ping a nearby communications satellite to lure out a patrol, then follow them back to their base. Hey, it's a tactic we've used before, but I'll stop doing it when they stop falling for it. We pass through a particularly dense patch of the azure stellar dust and our sensors go haywire. Well, there's our answer for the interference we're experiencing. It's a nice touch to see that the cloud is actually so dense we can see the armage's silhouette, its shadow played out on the pastel greens of the mists. The blue clouds that gently brush across the system do so around the curve of a path of dust, marking out a cold trail for us. The array stands out easily enough, it's the only red glow in the system. We begin to enact our old trick of crying for attention, then backtrack to the cloud of dust we passed through. As said, we don't have a cloaking device, but this field will serve to hide us adequately. That's the trouble with building your base in natural hiding spots like this. What makes it difficult to see in, also makes it difficult to see out. We power down our systems and wait.
and the Remans send a scout ship to see who's messing with their comma ray. While its scan sweeps past us, we remain undetected. But then disaster strikes in the form of a decloaking to Deradex class warbird. Were the Romulans shadowing us? Had they been waiting to see what we'd do? If so, then they should have waited a little bit longer for us to do all the legwork finding the Remans, then struck. No, more likely they detected our comm ping, just as the Remans did. It would have to have been a high-powered burst to clear this level of interference. I guess they came to investigate too, finding a Reman vessel. After all, we know that they're preparing to attack this system, so it makes sense they'd have eyes on it. This is not good. We need that Reman vessel alive to tail it back to their base. We're going to have to interfere. The minute we reveal ourselves, we're hailed. Hello there. The Raptor will rise again. Commander Tark of the Warbird seems to relish the fact that technically Starfleet's in the wrong here. We're far across the neutral zone, and he reminds us not to try to render aid to the Remans. He even promises to overlook our intrusion into an internal affair, otherwise our presence is an unprovoked invasion into Romulan space. Thing is, I'm willing to bet this cloud of interference is blocking long-range comms, as well as invasive sensor scans. Tanae said we weren't to antagonise the Romulans. But Tanae doesn't need to know. Well, not right away, anyway. Besides, we already upset things by luring the Remans here in the first place. I'm rationalising, aren't I? Let's just hope that by the end of this, we find something that proves our actions justified. Still, I'm not going to open fire unless it's in defence. Now I know full well what's about to happen, but I'll be damned if I'm the one that throws the first punch. Alright, no time to worry now. We exchange fire with the Romulan vessel, making sure to stay out of range of its tractor beam, but eventually they snare us and deploy a volley of heavy torpedoes. We manage to weather the salvo with a combination of hazard emitters, repair teams, and ordering the crew to brace for impact prevents major injuries. Still, I'd rather not go through that again. Seeing that they've wasted their opening, we come around and press the counter-attack before they can reinitiate their tractor beam. We unload everything the Armager has, diverting auxiliary power to weapons to amplify our punches. It's a high-risk manoeuvre against a foe who can annihilate us at close range, but it pays off. Well, they'll not be reporting anything now. Not happy with that outcome, and if we don't find the answers we're looking for, Mark Hale is going to have to answer some serious questions. As we approach the Remans, they manage to restore their engines and bolt. Clearly they don't have warp online yet or they'd have jumped already, but let's not lose them. The chase begins. This is a race on two fronts. The first seems obvious, we need to stay on top of them as they try to speed away. They could easily lose us in the clouds of this system. The second is a race of mechanics versus maths. They're trying to restore warp and jump away, and we're trying to compute their warp signature so that we can track it. If we don't succeed, then the minute they go faster than light, we'll lose them. Sure, we can track their trajectory, but if they change direction, then that's not going to help. Speeding through the system, the race terminates as a new threat enters the fray. This Mogai warbird is surprisingly tough, but I beat it without any incident. <coughs> Just look out for its tractor beam turrets. During our diversion, the Riemann vessel has finished its repairs and manages to warp away. Thankfully, Tomet has finished her computations and we have their warp signature. We can follow when ready. The planet we arrive at is still within the Dera system, there are four by the looks of it, which means we just performed an inter-system warp jump, and so did the Remans. Risky. Faster than light travel, in a system with debris everywhere. You can see how that could end badly. 
With no ships detected in the area, we do get a lock on an underground facility on the planet's surface. Nowhere else to go for now, so we should prepare an away team and beam down into the seemingly natural cavernous structure. We see immediate signs of inhabitants, and Timet is amazed to point out that this structure is formed from the disassembled remains of a Tederodex class warbird. I'm sure th she's thrilled. I'm caught up with how cold it is. The Remans seem to have found a natural cave system on this planet and begun to transport segments of a downed warbird into the caves to repurpose its hull and corridors as base building materials. Smart use of resources. Also, to met your inner skirt and Vulcan. Cold isn't an emotion, how are you not freezing? This cave system is inhabited by flora and fauna. The jackal mastiffs attack us on sight, so we put them down quickly enough. Stun settings, of course. I imagine the fresh meat is hard to come by here, and their white pelts and gnashing fangs mark them out as deadly ambush hunters. There's not much to see around. A couple of supplies, lots of equipment, and many of these ice caverns show signs of melting in places. It must be warmer in here now than it was originally. Reaching the end of this series of chambers, Tarsi notes the presence of mining machinery, probably used to expand this facility. It's inactive now, but surely we must be getting closer to the Remans. Ah, a metal grate blocks our path. Great. Nulia, our resident Bajoran field engineer, points out that our hand phasers will do nothing against this Tritanium frame, but that mining laser we passed might. Around the far side, we find the primary controls for it, so we push a few buttons. Ah, oh, it's broken. Depending on your background, a solution will present itself to repair it. For Captain Mark Hale, who got top marks in tactical at the Academy, he'll summarise that a collection of power cells from hand weapons, wired together, will cause the mining laser to overload and fire off a single powerful blast. I'd rather not disarm the entire away team, so we need to locate some Riemann rifles among the many crates stored here. Unfortunately, our presence seems to have awoken some Glicama ice spiders. It's no surprise that Tarsi notes them, they are native to Andoria after all, as mentioned in the tabletop Star Trek RPG. Now, I don't know if this was a random bit of dialogue, or specifically here because she's an Andorian, but it was a nice touch. As we collect the deposited weapons, we can conclude that the jackals and the spiders are the reason for the metal grate in the first place. Clearly the Remans want to utilise this space for storage, but don't want to have to deal with the native fauna. Collecting all three power cells, we're able to fuse them together, creating a supply we can hotwire into the mining laser. It probably wouldn't pass any safety regulations, but it'll get the job done. Success! We've blasted through! Now, we're going to have to prepare ourselves. It's very likely that the Remans heard that attempt at breaking in. Up ahead we can see some Remans in the dim light, but they don't attack. They don't even draw their weapons. Um... Are we expected? Stopping one of the resistance fighters that passes us by, we can question him. We can ask him what led him to fight the Romulans, what his life is like here, and what does he think it'll take to end this conflict. He surmises life on Dera 4 as cold and dark, but safe from the Romulans for now. He tells us grimly that his wife used to be on a mining ship until the Tau Shiar crossed it and interrogated the crew for unknown reasons. She died in their custody. He also tells us that he has no plans now since the loss of his wife so this is why he fights the Romulans. He has been very forthcoming with his backstory. Clearly we are expected, and we can hear similar tales all around the complex as we proceed unharassed through its icy corridors. Eventually we end up in the control centre of sorts, and face to face with Obisek. This place won't be safe forever. We have to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Prepare the- Ah, it's you. 
Welcome to the heart of the Resistance, little spy. There is so much for us to discuss, and so little time. The Tal Shiar have discovered this, our last refuge. They will be here soon, and my people and I will have to fight for our lives. Yet one question remains. Will you be our friend, or our enemy? With that, his subordinates leave to prepare to evacuate the facility. We let them pass. Sounds like things are going to kick off soon. But Obisek is offering us a chance to talk. Something he did on our first encounter, but that was to buy time. But here, time is his enemy. So this opportunity may be genuine. My hope is that you are here to talk. But I am prepared for the alternative. The Tal Shiar could arrive at any time. Speak quickly. First things first, Obisek, are you still in possession of Thaleron weapons? A small supply. They are terrible things. Weapons of war so horrible, they should have never been invented at all. But they were. And my enemies are great. If I must resort to barbarism to free my people, that is not too high of a price to pay. Why are you fighting the Tal Shiar? We heard stories on the way in, but I want to hear his justification. Why? You ask why? This place is one of the last sanctuaries left to my people, and even it is lost to us now. The Romulans have driven us from our homes, destroyed our ships, and captured or killed our loved ones. They seek to exterminate us, and we will not go quietly. Understand, I do not want this war. I want freedom for my people. It is the Romulans and the Dark Masters they serve who have caused this. Now they must suffer the consequences. Well, Obisek's reasons line up with what Admiral Tanay's opinion of the Reman Separatists is. So is this persecution at the hands of Empress Sela? The campaign of terror is the Tal Shiar's doing, not the Empress's. Still, Sela does nothing to stop it. There is little love between the Empress and the Tal Shiar. Did you know that many years ago, she was exiled from Romulus for attempting to assassinate the head of their order? The Tal Shiar have their own masters, and Sela despises what she cannot control. Interesting. We've seen in the past that the Tal Shiar has rebuked Sela's authority, but to go so far as to ally with another power? What are they playing at? Kiev and the Tal Shiar no longer serve the Empire. The demons of air and darkness are their masters now. They whisper in the night for chaos and despair, and Hakiv gives them blood as tribute. Our blood. A tad dramatic, Obisek, but we've heard that term before, demons of air and darkness. And several times, Romulan Tal Shiar commanders have alluded to their dark masters. Tell me, what do you know of these demons? This could be our suspected third party involvement. I've never seen one of these demons, and I will not speak their name, but I know they exist. Eons ago, they ruled this part of the galaxy. After thousands of years of tyranny and death, the races they ruled rose up against them, driving them from their home world into unexplored space. We thought they had been destroyed. We were wrong. The demons of air and darkness survive and they hunger for revenge. If his claims are true, and there is some entity pulling the Tal Shiar's strings, we're free to help out, though all this talk of ancient powers seems a little outlandish. Obisek, have you at least tried a peaceful solution? There will be no peace. Not while Hakiv lives. This is not a problem that can be solved by diplomacy. Hakiv kills my people, I kill his. That is how it will be until one of us is dead. I need more to go on. What do you actually want from us? We need your help. Talk to Starfleet Command. Tell them what you have seen. Tell them if my people are to survive, we need assistance. Starships, soldiers, medicine, protection for the refugees. I'm asking for the Federation's aid. You claim to be an organization dedicated to freedom for all peoples. Tell me, will you help my people now? Ah, there is a line between supplying you with soldiers and weapons and providing your refugees shelter. Don't lump them all together like that. I can sincerely empathise with their plight and I kind of believe him. 
there's a strong suspicion that there is a bigger power play going on here than just simply a Tao Shiar plot, but we've got no actual proof. We can either arrest Obisek, we have a number of charges he's wanted on, and he's just confessed to still possessing Thaler on weapons, or we can stand aside. Well, we're not supposed to interfere with an internal matter, and we have no definitive proof that this isn't, so we could technically let him go. I am glad you see things my way. Get instructions from your commanders if you must, but the battle rages, and we must join it. With your help, my people will be free. Sure, this goes well above my station, and I would like advice, but as Obisek said, there's little time. I'm pleased you see that my cause is just. We can do great- Sir, Romulan transporter signals detected. I will return to my ship and attempt to hold off their forces. Help my soldiers defend this base. Start the evacuation. We must get the civilians out. The Tal Shiar have entered the base. Commander Roshna, transport the reinforcements here. Tell them to assist our new ally. Security forces transporting. Fight well, my friend. My people are counting on you. Well, aiding in the evacuation of the civilians is something Starfleet will have no trouble getting behind. Scavrin aboard the Armager contacts us to let us know that the Tao Shiar have initiated a transporter scrambler. We can't beam out until we disable it, nor can the civilians. We fight our way through the attackers, plasma grenades intensifying the ambient glow with a cold aurora. Energy weapons streak past us as we push through. Reaching the next corridor, retracing our entry, we find the Remans engaged in combat with another Romulan patrol. This time, we have the drop on them. We search onwards, looking for the transport inhibitor and the Remans we saved rally alongside us, turning the tide against the attackers. Among the Tao Shiar, we find their general directing the ground forces. The General has far more health and is a tougher opponent than their subordinates, but they can't hold off the advancing tide of Reman and Starfleet officers. She stands between us and the exit after all. We've got no choice but to force aside all obstacles. Not much further beyond that, we find the transporter inhibitor, and we are finally able to disable it. Tarsi sums up what we know before we leave. I'd say we were getting our story straight, but honestly, all we really have to do here is tell the truth to Admiral Tanay. Obisek is convinced that there are a race of demons, as he calls them, pulling the strings of the Tao Shi'ar. The evidence we ourselves have seen along the way makes numerous references to such a force, but we've seen no evidence of these beings in the flesh, so our evidence is circumstantial, but there's enough of it to warrant further investigation. And with our acquiescing to understand Obisek's point of view, if not his actions, we may be able to extend an olive branch, hopefully curtail any more unnecessary deaths. I sympathize with Obisek's plight, but I do not know if we will be able to assist him. He has no proof of these demons that he claims are directing Haki's actions. Without that, becoming directly involved in this conflict would be a violation of the Prime Directive. We will protect the Federation, offer aid to the refugees, and keep this conflict from spilling over into our territory. But if Obasek and his followers are going to continue this fight, they will do so without Starfleet support. Admiral Tanay's orders have an air of finality about them. I would protest further, ask for more time in Romulan space to ascertain the truth, but the cut transmission makes that impossible. Obisek knew what he was doing when he let us walk into their camp unopposed. We chatted to the resistance there, got to hear their polite, became emotionally involved and sympathetic. Perhaps Tanay, removed from the emotions and viewing the cold hard statistics of the situation, helps. Perhaps we too need some distance to see the larger picture. But I can't help wondering, how many Remans are going to die in their vendetta against the Tao Shiar? How many of Hakeev's followers are going to throw themselves against the Remans, and how many civilians are going to get caught in the crossfire of Obisek and Hakeev, while we have a moral crisis? We'll have to see what we can do later. Thank you for watching the continuing adventures of the USS Armager and her crew as we navigate towards the end of the Romulan mystery story arc. 
and onwards through the ever-expanding narrative of Star Trek Online. Until next time, thanks again. I've been Rick, and goodbye. <laughs>